What's going on, everybody? Our Joe Ochoa here from SB Nation's bloggingtheboys.com. Hope all is well wherever you are. We hope you're happy, safe, healthy, and once again, we hope you're excited for Dallas Cowboys training camp. We're now almost close to inside a month away from training camp beginning out in Oxnard, California. And once it starts, there's going to be a lot of positions up for grabs, a lot of positions being fought for, lots of tinkering, lots of roster adjusting happening on the fly. And we're here on the Blog and the Boys YouTube channel. Make sure you do subscribe, by the way, breaking down every position as we get closer and closer to Cowboys camp. So first things first, up today, we told you about it. Here we are, defensive end time. That's right, we are here to talk about the state of the defensive ends on the Dallas Cowboys, the position that features the war daddy that Jerry Jones once coveted and now has in Demarcus Lawrence. But obviously the Cowboys need a lot of contributors at the position besides Tank. Tank Lawrence is one of the best defensive ends in the NFL. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. He's great. I know the sack numbers aren't there, but he is tremendous. The pressure rate is really the most important thing when it comes to it. Sacks are not everything. They're glitzy. They're glamorous. They are important, but they don't carry 100% of the value. So all that being said, though, what do the Dallas Cowboys have to offer at defensive end? Because like we said, we know the Cowboys have Demarcus Lawrence, but what else do they have? All right. What do they really have going on? Now, here is every defensive end on the Dallas Cowboys roster as of now, as always sorted alphabetically for you. We start with last year's fifth round pick, Bradley and I, Dallas Cowboys. I know you're listening. Please play him. Let him play. Let Bradley and I play. Anyway, Dorrance Armstrong, who Jerry Jones, the aforementioned Jerry Jones, really, really, really loves. Terrell Basham, one of this year's free agent acquisitions by the Dallas Cowboys. Rondell Carter, uh, shout out to the Nooch, and of course, James Madison University. Uh, Chauncey Golston, Randy Gregory, who we're going to talk about quite a bit here in just a moment. The aforementioned Demarcus Lawrence. Brent Urban, who also plays inside, really a rotational player the Cowboys could use a number of different ways, which is why we listed him here. And Carlos Watkins, those last two, also part of this year's free agency edition and the overall free agent class. Now, all that being said, I really, you know, I'm going to say, I'll just say it right now, I don't really think the Cowboys did a lot to address the position this offseason, um, especially when you look at the other positions, the other elements, the other kind of waves of the defense. When you look at the Cowboys linebacking group, they drafted Micah Parsons in the first round. They added another uh, linebacker in the fourth round, Andrew Brooke Cox. They signed a notable linebacker in free agency in Keanu Neal. When it comes to the secondary, the Cowboys signed a bunch of safeties. They didn't really sign a high-quality safety, but they did still sign one. Um, and so outside of that, they did draft Kelvin Joseph at corner. They obviously drafted Nishan Wright at corner. They obviously also drafted Israel Mukwamu. I mean, so the Cowboys threw a lot of resources at safety. They really didn't throw a lot of resources at defensive end. Again, let's put this roster back up here, and you look at it, and overall, Bradley and I, in addition last year, who really didn't get to play, and that was disappointing and frustrating. Dorrance Armstrong has been around for a while. Terrell Basham, part of this year's free agency class again. Rondell Carter, I think we all have hopes for him, but I don't really think there's anything that you can rely on when it comes to Rondell Carter. Chauncey Golston, a rookie, granted a third-round pick by the Cowboys, so that is a notable investment. I don't want to say they really did nothing in a literal sense. We're speaking kind of figuratively here in an overall sense. Randy Gregory, obviously, has been on the team as Demarcus Lawrence, and Carlos Watkins and Brent Urban, we mentioned, were part of the free agency class. But this is a position that really is kind of in a weird state. When you look at the defensive ends for the Dallas Cowboys last season, there's some to like and some to be concerned about. When you look at it, Alden Smith obviously had a very successful season for the Cowboys, uh, playing opposite of Demarcus Lawrence, a role that has suited pass rusher as well. We'll get to that idea in a moment too. Last year, though, Mike Nolan's defense really inhibited what the Cowboys pass rushers were able to do. We saw this impact every element, every sector of the defense. Everybody really was not fond. Nobody was fond, rather, of Mike Nolan and what he was bringing to the Cowboys fold. Tyrone Crawford, was a Dallas Cowboys defensive end, retired. And I know that we are talking about, um, you know, legitimate things happening. And I don't mean to poo-poo Tyrone Crawford. Certainly wish him the best in retirement. And while we have to mention the fact that he retired, I really don't think that this is notable. We want it to be on the record, but I don't think this is really like, I don't think anybody's losing sleep because Tyrone Crawford is not part of the rotation at defensive end in 2021. It was just, it was time for him to retire, which is why that ultimately is what happened. So. Are we feeling good? I mean, like when you think about the way last season ended for the Cowboys at defensive end, and when you factor in the free agency additions, when you factor in Tyrone Crawford's retirement, when you factor in the draft, and not that the Cowboys, like they, they didn't have a big needed edge rusher. And I'm, I'm not trying to say that, you know, they do now, but they just are kind of so-so. They're just kind of okay at the position. I feel like they're relying 
on Demarcus Lawrence, and they're relying on Randy Gregory. And to be clear here, I think I speak for all of us in saying we're all rooting for Randy Gregory's journey, his path forward, his steps in life. That is all great, and that is all awesome to see, and we are going to continue to root for Randy Gregory. But talking about the football of it all, I've said this for years now. If you have listened to me in different podcasts, by the way, make sure you do subscribe to the Blog and the Boys podcast network. We are available on all major podcast platforms. We put out a show every single day because we know that news is constantly happening in the world of America's team. But um, when it comes to Randy Gregory, something I have said for years is it's risky for the Cowboys in just a football sense to count on him. And that has nothing to do with, um, you know, his path or anything like that. That just has to do with who is he as a player now, right? Because it's been a long time since he's had the opportunity to really kind of run through, you know, what is a normal season for an NFL player. In fact, Mike McCarthy said a few weeks ago at minicamp that this was the first time since his rookie year that Randy Gregory was participating in a full offseason with the Dallas Cowboys. And that's just kind of been his career to this point. And so while I think it's certainly worthwhile to have Randy Gregory around, I certainly believe that he can offer something to you. I don't know that you can count on that. I mean, I think you have to treat Randy Gregory as kind of icing on top of the cake at this point. So if we look at the state of the Cowboys defensive ends entering 2021, that is something that I, do, I don't want to call it a, a, a negative or a con for making pros and cons. That's just – that's a risky play. That That's all. That's a risky play to hope. That's a hopeful play, rather. That's a really nice way to put it. It's a hopeful play to assume that Randy Gregory is going to be reliable week in and week out as a football player when you just don't know. I mean, his career has been so, you know – disoriented and you know has had so many stops and starts and stalls that you just don't know who he's going to be that potential is certainly in there with him to be a great player still but you just don't know if it's going to be there and so I think relying on that is risky at best but it might pay off for the Cowboys they have believed in Randy Gregory since day one and good for them because his rise as a person again is something that should be celebrated but believing in him as a football player while is also something that makes sense is just a little bit risky when you need somebody else opposite to Demarcus Lawrence. Uh, we talked about Mike Nolan, obviously, being fired, and you don't want to celebrate somebody being fired, but the fact that Dan Quinn is now here is definitely a good thing. Dan Quinn, obviously, can do a lot of things on a defense and obviously overseeing the whole thing, but this is, this is just a really... It's a rising tide that lifts all boats type thing. I know I've used that expression before, but having Dan Quinn back will help everybody out. But, I mean, ultimately, this is a group... I would honestly say this might be the thinnest position on the defensive side of the ball outside of safety. I mean, you've and it's it's you know inflated by the fact that it has Demarcus Lawrence, but outside of Demarcus Lawrence, I don't want to say there are just question marks, but there are a lot of hmm, there are a lot of like the thinking emojis or the emoji with the monocle on his eye. Like that's how I feel about the state of the Cowboys defensive ends, uh, because they didn't truly bring in outside help. Yes, they brought in Terrell Basham and Brent Urban and Carlos Watkins and drafted Chauncey Golson, but none of those were commitments that were equal to what they did or what they made at other positions on the defensive side of the ball. Again, Micah Parsons, Jabril Cox, Keanu Neal, linebacker. That is a serious level of devotion. Obviously, you know, you bring in a number of different safeties. Demonte KZ kind of headlines the free agency class. You draft Kelvin Joseph. You draft Nashawn Wright. You draft Israel Mukwama. You throw a lot of resources at the secondary. And so part of the problem is if you're throwing resources everywhere else, you're just kind of out of resources when it comes to defensive end. But I just, you know, I think I speak for all of us in saying I think we'd feel a little bit more comfortable if there was a little bit more notable pass rusher opposite of DeMarcus Lawrence because that's been what has been successful so far. I mean, because that's – you need two. You know, you can't just have one. And maybe Randy Gregory is the guy. What is fair? What What is fair for Randy Gregory in 2021? I will ask you, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, what's fair? What is fair to expect from Randy Gregory in 2021? Is it fair to expect double-digit sacks? No, that's not fair. That's not really fair to expect of anybody outside of the top pass rushers in the NFL. Is it fair to expect him to play more often than not and be a legitimate presence on defense? Sure, that's kind of where we're starting here. I think if you do want to put a number on it, if I set the over-under at, I don't know, five and a half sacks. If I set the over-under at five and a half sacks for Andy Gregory in 2021, what are you taking? Because the position opposite of Demarcus Lawrence is something that really – works well for players. And I think that that is what could potentially lead to Randy Gregory having a really great season. And maybe we're sitting here come, uh, well, not January, come, maybe not even February, because we're, we're going to be celebrating the Super Bowl for like a month. Um, so come March, and everyone's going to be telling me like, RJ, you idiot, Randy Gregory was awesome. Why didn't you believe? Well, again, 
if you play defensive end opposite of Demarcus Lawrence, life works pretty well for you in the NFL. Think about the last two dudes to do it over the course of the last two years. We mentioned Alden Smith last season in 2020. Robert Quinn, who the Cowboys traded for in 2019, obviously did it that year. Robert Quinn, I mean, was a monster opposite of Demarcus Lawrence in 2019. And that season was broken in a lot of different ways for the Cowboys as well. 11 and a half sacks. And that's what got him paid. I mean, Robert Quinn went and got paid by the Chicago Bears and got the Cowboys a compensatory pick. So it really did work out. Uh, but then Alden Smith showed up. And remember early on, early on last season, Alden Smith was on fire and looked like a great investment the Cowboys made. And they really, you know, I don't want to take any credit away from Alden. He put in the work. He did it, et cetera. Congratulations to him. Wish him well with the Seattle Seahawks. But the Cowboys helped Alden Smith revive and resuscitate his NFL career. He had five sacks, and early on, he was one of the biggest names on the Dallas Cowboys, especially after that game against the Seattle Seahawks. In fact, you'll recall NFL Network reported that the Seahawks actually had interest in trading for Alden Smith at the time. You can make the argument now whether the Cowboys should have done it, et cetera. What's done is done. Hindsight's 2020, et cetera. But – I mean, both of these dudes over the last two seasons playing on the other edge or on the other spot on the on the edge opposite of Demarcus Lawrence have had some pretty successful campaigns. So can this be Randy Gregory? I mean, if if we put Randy Gregory somewhat in the middle here, I said five and a half sacks as the over under. If if what Alden Smith did last year was Randy Gregory, would you not be pleased with that? Because I think if we're asking the question, what are expectations for Randy Gregory in 2021? If he puts forward what Alden Smith did in 2020, I think you call that a win. I think you go home and I think you feel pretty pleased about it. I mean, that's that's a good thing. So if if that's where we're at, you know, come March 2021 with the Cowboys having won their sixth Super Bowl in franchise history, I think that's okay. But Randy Gregory is kind of the only guy opposite of Demarcus Lawrence that that I really feel Hope is not the right word that I feel excitement about. I have hope for a lot of guys, and I know you do too. I have hope. I have a lot of hope for Bradley and I. Again, Cowboys, please pay, uh, play him. P- saying please play back to you know back to back like that is tough. You want to say please pay. I mean, pay him too, but please play Bradley and I, Dallas Cowboys, please. Uh, but so I have hope for Bradley and I. I have hope for Chauncey Golson. I have hope for Terrell Basham. I have hope for Carlos Watkins. I have hope for Dorrance Armstrong. Jerry Jones loves Dorrance Armstrong. I have hope for all these guys. But the only one who I think really gets me excited, besides Demarcus Lawrence, because Demarcus Lawrence is the war daddy, as mentioned, is probably Randy Gregory. But, you know, that's just kind of the state of the position at this point, which is why it's so interesting and why training camp is going to tell us a lot. And so we go into training camp, obviously, with a number of different questions. And so let's kind of, you know, because we like to do the work for you, let's put these questions up here. Number one. Will Bradley and I finally be utilized more in 2021? I mentioned, I have a lot of hope for Bradley and I. All right, Bradley and I, please, Dallas Cowboys, play him. Not pay, but do pay him. I I think he has to. I mean, I, I think he has to be utilized more. I mean, he wasn't even active, you know, more, most of the time last season. I think Bradley and I, and that's when, when we did our live shows during the 2021 NFL draft and the Cowboys drafted Chauncey Golson, the number one thing I thought about was how does this impact Bradley and I? And look, Sometimes this happens, right? And for all we know, Bradley and I will have a Hall of Fame career, and we all hope that for every NFL player. But sometimes we fall in love with guys. We fall in love with prospects. We fall in love with players once they're drafted, and we kind of you know, c- keep and hold them as our pet cat as training camps were on, as multiple years were on, as multiple seasons go by. And so maybe, you know, maybe the Cowboys have seen enough from Bradley and I. Maybe they'll see enough through training camp this year and kind of feel like, you know what, we'd rather give those reps to Chauncey Golston. That obviously exists in the world of possibilities. I do think, look, Bradley and I is early on in his NFL career, so to say this is the most important training camp in his NFL career is kind of silly, but it is an incredibly important training camp for Bradley and I because it is the opportunity that he has to separate himself. He got lost in the fall last year. That's what happens when you have a lot of defensive ends kind of at the back of the roster. You throw a fifth-round rookie in the mix, and it's just kind of a hodgepodge of different dudes. And so... The question is, can Bradley and I be utilized more in 2021? This is kind of like when you're in second grade and you say, can I go to the bathroom? And the teacher says, you may go to the bathroom. I don't know if you can go to the bathroom, but you may. I cer- I mean, he can. He can certainly be utilized more. It's whether or not the Cowboys do it. I think they do because the bar is so low again. Like if he's utilized at all, that's kind of more. Um, but I do. I don't know that I see a huge role for him in 2021, but I absolutely expect the Cowboys to at least give him more opportunities than he got in his rookie year. Now. Question number two, will any of the free agent acquisitions actually make an impact? And that one is a tough question to answer optimistically uh, because, I mean, 
Who? Who's who's the free agent that the Cowboys brought in that's going to really show up? Last year was Alden Smith. The year before, granted, they traded for him, but it was kind of sort of pseudo Robert Quinn. There's not that guy this year. I mean, look, Terrell Basham, you know, Carlos Watkins, Brent Urban, cool, but there's not that guy. Maybe they will find nice roles for themselves, but I don't know that any of those players are making a true impact that is being felt in a dramatic way on defense. I just don't think that's happening. I mean, none of these guys are players the Cowboys like really went after in free agency. Yes, they ultimately got them all. I do think that Brent Urban will make an impact all over. He is kind of the new Tyrone Crawford uh, in terms of peak Tyrone Crawford as, as far as being this ultimate piece that you can move around and utilize in a number of different ways. And that's kind of cheating a little bit to answer this question. So maybe the answer is Brent Urban. But if we're talking about strictly as a pass rusher, as a defensive end, I don't think so. I'm I, I think the answer is no right now, um, but hey, it is what it is. Um, what sack numbers will we see in the player opposite of Lawrence? That player is Randy Gregory, and we mentioned the over-under, five and a half. I think I think you could take the over. I really do. And I think a lot of it is that the overall defense is going to be improved. Part of the issue here and part of what the issue has been is you could have the best pass rush in the world, but if your linebackers can't cover, I mean, it doesn't really matter. You know, I, I mean – great you know maybe sometimes these pass rushers are getting home but if nobody's covering in the middle of the field it doesn't take long for a quarterback to get that ball out of their hands and so now that you have these linebackers who are going to make life more difficult for opposing quarterbacks and even linebackers that are getting after these opposing quarterbacks like Micah Parsons will I think that changes the overall kind of you know flow and that allows for your Randy Gregory's or what used to be your Alden Smith's or what used to be your Robert Quinn's to pay you know potentially get more you know more involvement more action more sacks things like that so I think the answer is yes um or, or, or not yes I, I kind of changed the question uh what sack numbers will we see I think we will see respectable sack numbers for Randy Gregory I maintain that it is a um, risky play to rely on that because you just don't know Randy's career is so unique um, and has been so unique, but I do think that it will ultimately happen. And the Cowboys seemingly do as well because they've kind of bet on it. I mean, right? Like what, what have the Cowboys done to really threaten Randy Gregory's potential to be a starter in this defense, right? Nothing. That's what we've been talking about. Like none of these free agent additions really kind of, you know, are anybody that is going to make us feel like, well, that's going to be the dude that gets all of the snaps, especially with Tyrone Crawford gone. Tyrone Crawford reached a point, look, had a very, very nice career for the Cowboys was a beloved captain of the team, but you know, he was, he was inhibiting the progress or the growth of other players. And that's just what happens, right? Certain players, they're, you know, eating up snaps that should go to younger players, growing players, ascending players. And so now seemingly we will see those opportunities go to your Randy Gregory's, your Bradley and I's, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So let's take one last look at this roster with our starters, with some fancy uh, little stars around their names. Um, and, and, you know, you tell me, Let's go thumbs up, thumbs down, all right? Where I can see it, trust me. Um, how you feel about these players, these defensive ends on the Dallas Cowboys entering 2021. Uh, let's get it right here. Let's do this, let's do this the right way. Uh, right here, there's the camera, okay? Bradley and I, I'm holding. I'm holding, I'm feeling good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to my right hand because it's easier. I'm holding on Bradley and I. I'm feeling good, all right? Bradley and I got a thumbs up. I think you do too, so let's go ahead and pound it right there. Good job. All right, now, Dorrance Armstrong, okay like I, I don't i don't really feel like i don't i don't feel passionate one way or the other is really where I, dorrance armstrong will be on the team that's about all i can say about dorrance armstrong at this point terrell basham kind of you know hey maybe he'll have a nice moment and you know, the cowboys have have kind of these these low-key free agent additions they've made i'm sort of down on on them as a whole this season but they have kind of worked out you know, remember the cowboys carry hiders now like a low-key great defensive end in the nfl cowboys you know had a cup of coffee with carry hider i mean they're capable of identifying talent to some degree so we'll keep that kind of minimum uh rondo carter i think keeping a minimum is is fair right now. I mean, still very early till still too soon to call uh, Chauncey Golston. I think you have to keep it, you know, in the middle. Uh, I promise I'm not trying to like ride the fence here, but you know, Hey, it's his rookie season. What more can you expect from the guy? We're going to be positive. All right. Randy Gregor, going to be positive and go thumbs up. I don't, I don't want to give any thumbs downs. You know, it's just, it feels mean. I'm in a really nice mood today. I hope you are too. I just, you know, Hey, uh, Demarcus Lawrence, two thumbs up. Two thumbs up for Demarcus Lawrence, one of the best edge rushers in the NFL. Brent Urban, I'm actually going to go thumbs up because of the overall utilization like we talked about. Carlos Watkins, meh, you know, it is what it is. I mean, just, hey. So, yeah. And overall, the group, 
I'm not quite middle. I'm not quite up. I'm kind of like 45 degrees. You know, that's that's where I'm at when it comes to the group entering 2021. But how do you feel about the Cowboys, about the defensive ends? How do you feel about anything? We want to know. Let us know in the comments down below. Make sure you do subscribe to the Blog on the Boys YouTube channel if you have something you want to get off your chest, if you have something you want us to talk about, you have any thoughts, any musings that you want to share, leave them in the comments. If you want to hit me up directly, you can hit me up on Twitter or Instagram. My DMs are open at RJ Ochoa. If email is more your speed maybe that's how you choose to communicate with people rj.ochoa at sbnation.com but uh other than that i think uh i think we said it all this is again the second video in our series covering all the positions on the dallas cowboys entering training camp so be on the lookout we'll continue it next week we got our pedal not our pedal to the metal we got our foot on the pedal pedal on the foot on the gas whatever the expression is uh we're going to keep turning these out we're having a lot of fun doing it we appreciate all the support as we continue to do so subscribe right here to the blog on the boys youtube channel and do me a favor have the absolute best day of all time you know why because you deserve it we'll see you next time